Our IT band or iliotibial band is that thick band of fascia that runs down the outer thigh from the ilium at the top of the pelvis to the top of the tibia just below our knee. Its role is to connect and stabilize the pelvis and the knees during movement. Many runners suffer with IT band syndrome, which is the most common reason for knee pain. In this video, I'll show you three or four yoga poses and exercises to help relieve or keep ITBS at bay. I'm Helen Clare, this is Run Better with Yoga, helping you to run stronger, longer and injury free with yoga. If you're new here, then please do subscribe to our channel and look out for our weekly videos. So recently I shared a class for the IT band that was all lying down, which I'll put a link to below. Today we're going to be standing. Okay, so we're gonna start standing. Just come and stand nice and tall. Take a moment to look at your feet and just bring them as parallel as you can. Spread your toes as much as you can. And then take your hands to your hips. Bend your knees. So we're coming in to do some chair lifts here. Now draw the outer edges of your knee away from each other. But imagine that they're pressing into something just on the outside of the knee there. Or imagine that you want to move your feet away from one another but they're stuck to your mat. And you'll feel your gluteus medius and minimus in there, switch on. So let's keep that and we'll just start to take a few lifts. So lower down and coming back up. So just carry on there taking a few. So super simple in itself, but a really great way to take your attention to where glute medius is that area that we want to be focusing on to keep our pelvis nice and stable, particularly when we run. And then in that way, building strength there, taking some of the workload off of the TFL, which we know attaches to the IT band. Okay, so you're either gonna continue with a few more of those chair lifts. If it feels pretty good for you, and you feel quite steady and stable and you can keep your knees tracking forwards, then you can try it with one leg at a time. So we want it to feel pretty much the same, keeping that stability in the pelvis. So it's useful to do it in front of a mirror if you have a long mirror there. So keep the hands to the hips, so bend the knees, draw the outer knee out. As you lift and lower, on one foot there, just maintaining that alignment or levelness of the pelvis by finding your frontal hip bones. That's the easiest way that I can feel where my pelvis is. And you can either keep going until it gets tiring or count your breaths or count the movements to five, 10, maybe 15. So we'll switch sides if you haven't already. And another useful um, thing from doing this in front of the mirror is to notice what your knee is doing. So rather than having to look down at your knee, but if your knee is tipping into the center, that's not such a great thing. So keep drawing that outer knee out to keep it in line, tracking forwards over the ankle. Good, so five, 10, 15. Compare the sides. So you don't necessarily need to do the same number on each side. If it's much harder on one side than the other, then you're gonna work up to doing a little bit more on that harder side, just to put a little bit more effort and engagement and strength into your potentially weaker side. Obviously, if it hurts anywhere, if it's sore in your ankles or knees, stop, try again another day, just doing a few at a time. Okay, 
Next pose is to stand nice and tall. So the next one is a bit more of a traditional yoga pose. So it's a tree pose, but we're gonna take our hands to our hips. Set your gaze somewhere there in the distance and look at something that is not moving. And come to rest one heel on the opposite ankle. So we have our hands here in the same place on our hips. So our fingers on our frontal hip bones there. So our thumbs are just slightly touching the gluteus medius. So this is, it is, this is great here in itself with, its, with your toes on the floor. And if you can, bring your foot up onto your calf. Now draw in through your belly, get taller. This is though the balancing foot is pressing down into the earth, the crown of your head is lengthening up. So we're lengthening our spine, finding that axial extension. And then notice your hips, try to avoid gripping in the glutes at the back. So allow your piriformis at the back to relax. And let's focus on the pelvic stabilizers here on the outer edges of the hips, using those just to keep the pelvis level here. And so you might be able to feel whether you're tipping into your balancing leg side. Ideally, we're just resting here in the center. Now, some of you might be able to bring this leg up onto your inner thigh, go ahead. Otherwise, it really doesn't matter for the purposes of this one here. You can just keep that foot low down. Okay, let's switch sides. So the same thing, count your breaths in a balance like this. Do roughly the same either side. Start to do, spend a little bit longer in the harder side. All right, second side here. So let's move out of this balancing hip, using our core strength to get taller. Relaxing your shoulders. And maybe resting the foot on the inner calf. And that foot can actually press quite firmly into your calf. You won't really fall that way. It's quite unlikely you'll fall that way. And press your balancing foot down, lengthen up through your spine. So that subtle drawing in, in and up from the belly should be there pretty much all the time. It's not a constant gripping, but it's just a, a constant gentle drawing in supporting our lower back. So that's all the time day to day, especially when we run as well. And it's in a balance like this, it's a great place to really feel that um, efficiency and the benefit of our core stability there. Okay, just a few more breaths, relaxing around the back of the glutes. Feel the pelvis nice and level. Obviously, as with anything, this pose gets much easier the more we practice it. <sighs> Great, all right, last pose here, then we get to stretch out um, tensor fascia lata. Now, if you stick your thumb in up there, you might be able to find quite a tender spot. So that's the, the muscle that we're gonna be lengthening out here, it's called the dancing shiva. So one foot, we step it back behind, and we cross our wrists and we bend the knees and we're lengthening out one side. Now this is great for the whole side body, great for the lats as well, up here under the armpit, but just now we're focusing on this region, front, outer hip. Now, if the position or the balance is tricky for you, maybe just a few breaths. Five breaths in this one is great. Come up, step back, other side. Cross the wrist the other way. And the belly's gently drawing in here as well as we drop the hips down. I think this is a great way to stretch into this area of TFL, which 
can be quite tricky to stretch out. I'd love to see some pictures of you doing this one, dancing Shiva at the end of your runs. Okay, after round five rests, come back to the center. Oh, good, great, well done, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. There you have three fairly simple ways to build and maintain strength in gluteus medius and stretch out TFL. Do make them a part of your practice, your weekly or daily routine, especially if you're having IT issues or knee pain. But even if you're not, it's a great way to maintain that strength there. Let me know how you got on. Leave me a comment below the video. And I really look forward to seeing you next time.